Hi, this is Chuck King. Today on The King's Guide, in honor of 100 years of Armistice Day, we're remembering the Lincoln statue in downtown Spokane, which was dedicated on November 11, 1930. Today we know this day is Veterans Day, but originally Veterans Day was Armistice Day, which began at the 11th hour on the 11th day on the 11th month of 1918. Planning for the Lincoln statue began just four years later in 1922 when the Lincoln Memorial Association was created in Spokane. Originally intended, to honor veterans of the Civil War, the statue was planned to be dedicated in 1923. However, problems funding the project delayed it until 1930. The statue's sculptor, Alonzo Victor Lewis, could have sold the statue to other cities, but chose to honor his commitment to Spokane. The statue required over four tons of clay and stands 12 feet tall on a 10-foot base. Frank Swanson, owner of a local masonry company called Washington Monumental and Cut Stone, took a special interest in seeing the project completed. Sadly, Frank died just two months prior to the statue's dedication, but thankfully his family filmed the construction as well as the unveiling of the Lincoln statue. On November 11, 1930, a telegram from President Herbert Hoover gave the word, and balloons were set free that lifted the flag covering Spokane's new monument to Lincoln. 40,000 people gathered in downtown Spokane to celebrate the event. The Lincoln statue is unique in that it's the only statue of Lincoln visiting and overseeing the Union troops. While the statue may call to mind the Civil War, it's meant to honor all veterans who have served, living and dead. In the November-December issue of Nostalgia Magazine, Logan Camparelli writes about 2nd Lieutenant Frank Harrison Taylor, who served during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive during World War I. Taylor was wounded not once, but twice, and refused assistance, urging his men to overtake a heavily armed German position. His platoon was victorious, but Taylor died of his wounds soon after. A fellow officer wrote to Taylor's family saying, He indeed died a heroic death, and our country owes a great debt of gratitude to just such men. In 1930, when throngs of people gathered to celebrate the unveiling of the Lincoln statue, they were sure to have countless men like Frank Taylor in mind. And so should we all today. I'm Chuck King. See you next time on The King's Guide. If you like today's goodies on Spokane history, make sure you subscribe to Nostalgia Magazine. You'll find more goodies in every issue. Ageless stories, ageless photos. That's Nostalgia Magazine. Oh